G'day everyone. Today we're going to learn a little something about a thing called logarithms. Now, uh, if you go and ask your parents about logarithms, they might tell you about um, the log tables and log books and um, all sorts of other things. Um, but we probably won't go into that as much. We'll probably just uh, you know understand that the basic basics of them and also use our calculator because uh, technology has advanced um, a little bit in the last couple of years. So this is exercise uh, twelve point eight. Um, the first thing I want to do though is I want to look at um, uh, indicial equations or indice equations. Now you would have come across these um, towards the end of um, uh, 12.7 but I just want to sort of tackle the way that I would go about these. Um, you probably um, already know how to do this but um, I'm just going to show you anyway. Imagine I've got this one here, 2 to the power of x equals 16. So if I raise 2 to the power of something, I'm going to get the answer of 16. I need to work out what that something is. If I've got my calculator, I can do that in a particular way. I'll show you a little bit later. If I don't have my calculator, I sort of need to um, use my head a little bit and, uh, and realize that 16 is actually just a, uh, like a, a, a result of you know, um, when I raise 2 to the power of something. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and get 16 to the base 2. Okay, so I'm going to think to myself, you know, what's 2 times 2? Well, that's 4 times another 2, that's 8 times another 2, that's 16. So 2 to the power of x equals 2 to the power of Four that I had. Now, if the bases are the same uh, as I've got here, then I know that x actually equals four. So that number up there must equal that number there. So in this case, x equals four. It sort of seems fairly straightforward once you do that, but it can be a little bit tricky. Um, sometimes you can do that that one in your head, but when I go to this one, that one becomes a little bit harder to do in your head. So I need to raise three to the power of something to get one on twenty-seven. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn 1 on 27 into something that I know a little bit more about. I'm going to make it 27 to the power of negative 1. Hopefully you remember doing that. I can move, you know, that's already to the power of 1. I can move it up the top and change the, the sign if I want to. So, that becomes 3 to the power of 2x equals 27 to the power of negative 1. Now, again, I'm going to turn this into something that I know. Um, I'm going to try and get 27 to the base 3. So, it's... 3 to the power of 3 to the power of negative 1 equals 3 to the 2x. Again, I'm going to multiply now the negative 1 into this bracket, so it becomes 3 to the power of negative 3 equals 3 to the power of 2x. So now that the bases are the same, I can actually just um, look at this and realize that, well, 2x must equal negative 3. The powers must be the same. So x equals negative 3 on 2. I'm pretty sure you might have been able to do this one in your head. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't have been able to do that one in your head. Or at least it's a little bit harder to do that one in your head. It's a little bit less intuitive. Okay. Um, so that's um, indice equations. Um, now I kind of I want to look at indice equations um, but put, put them in a slightly different way called uh, logarithms. These are really useful. Um, particularly when we do some graphing and things. Um, and, and you also use them in chemistry if, you, if you're dealing with pH. Um, you ask your chemistry teacher how um, pH and logarithms are somehow involved. They are quite useful. Now, I'm going to start with just uh, 10 squared equals 100. And I'm actually going to transfer this into a log. Now, I'm, you know, at the moment, you just probably need to trust me. But um, in a little bit, I'll show you how it works. I'm going to say that log to the base 10 of 100 equals 2. These two things here are comparable or compatible. One is in a log form and one is in an indice form. Actually, I'm just going to rub out one direction of this. So, if I want to turn a log into an indice, I can rearrange to make it that. If I want to turn an indice into a log, I can do this. Now, logs, they, they look scary, um, but really what it's saying is that um, 
you know, if, if I've got a log 10 of 100 equals 2, it says, you know, I guess what we're asking is, what do I need to raise 10 to to get 100? Well, the answer is 2. So 10 to the power of 2 equals 100. Okay, that's kind of what we're, what we're doing. Now, as you can see, the 10 is slightly, um, you know, what do they call that? Is it a subscript or something? It's slightly lower. So the log and the 100 are on the same level, and the 10 is slightly lower than that. It's not 10 to the power of 100. Um, it's, you know, the, the 10 is, is just below the, the, the 100. Sometimes there's a bracket around there as well, like that. Okay. Now, you can turn a, a log into an indice just by rearranging, and, and I would encourage you to sort of just you know memorize or, or realize that if the, the base is 10, that is the same base over here. If uh, that's 100, the answer over here is 100, and if that is 2, then that becomes the power. Um, and you can also turn an um, indice into a log. Most commonly, we're turning a, a log into an indice, but sometimes you, you actually want to turn the indice into a log as well. So I'm just going to um, go through a couple of these questions just to show you how I would do these. So uh, we look at this log, um, log 4x equals 2. Um, I'll, I'll do it in the log form, but it's much easier to do this in indice form. So I'll do it in the log form first, but then I'll show you how to do it with indices. Um, so if I read this, it's um, what do I have? Oh, so when I raise 4 to the power of 2, I get x. Uh, I, I want to know what the x is. Now, I mean, I, I could sort of think about that. You know, what you know, four squared equals x. So you know, the x has to equal sixteen. But let me show you how if uh, to do this using indices. I'm going to first of all um, transport this into an indice um, form. So um, again, I remember that if ten is the base, then ten is the base over there. So that four is the base. Um, this equals 2 becomes the power so that's the power and then that equals this one in here which is x so then I can just say x equals 4 squared so x equals 16 okay and there we have it that's how we do that kind of question that's how we do it right first of all turning it in, into an indice and then uh, and you know actually just uh, solving it from there Let's have a look at this one over here. And these are, as you can see, the three examples I've got are um, when the x is, uh, you know, this number here, when the x is the base, and then finally when the x equals the number, but I'll show you that in just a second. So here, what number would I have to raise to the, you know, 3 to the power of, and let me say that again, I'm going to raise a number to the power of 3, and I'm going to get the answer of 125. What was the original number? That's what that means, um, and I guess you could probably see that from there. If I raise some number to the power of 3, I get 125. Well, the answer is probably going to be 5. But let me show you again how I would do that by turning it in, into an indice. Remember that, that if that's the base, then this is the base. If that equals 3, then that's the power. And if it equals, uh, sorry, 125 is the number there, that's what that equals over there 125 now again if I want to get this now I just go back to my indices and you know or oh, I guess it was you know almost in, in thirds wasn't it when we did the cube root when we started doing the cube root so I need the cube root of both sides which would be the cube root of 125 not three times the square root of 125 but the cube root and that ends up being five okay so again that's how we do that kind of question now the last question, um, it looks like it, you know, I don't actually have an x, but I do. The x is over here like that. Again, um, 2 to the power of x equals 64. Um, again, I, I, uh, I could work that out, um, but I'm going to turn it into an indice first. So that's 2, because that's the base 2. x, that's the number over there, and that equals 64. Again, I could uh, turn that into 2 to the power of x. Oop, where'd I go? Ah, back, back on it. 2 to the power of x, I think I pushed the page down <laughs> accidentally, um, equals 2 to the power of, um, well, 2 to the power of 4 was 16, 2 to the power of 5 is 32, 2 to the power of 6 must equal 
64 so x must equal 2 okay and that's how we do um, logs turning them into indices and then finding the answer the last thing I want to show you is just um, how to use your CAS calculator for some of these kinds of things. So I'm going to, um, for, first of all for logs, and then second of all for solving um, exponentials and log equations. I'm going to jump to my calculator page and uh, we'll go from there. So um, I just want to show you uh, logs. Um, if we go onto our calculator, and it will be slightly different for each calculator, but very, very similar. Um, you will notice um, a couple of power buttons, like here is, is the power of something, hopefully you've already seen that, and that's squared. And if you push control on, on those, you'll get the square root and the, and the nth root, whichever root you want. Over here, I've got um, 10 to the power of x, so sometimes that's useful, um, and e to the power of x, that's something that we use more in year 12. But if you have a look just above the 10 to the power of x, it's got the log button. So if I push control and then log, I'm going to get this here. Now, obviously, you can probably tell what we need to do from here. I'm going to go back to the, our previous question, which was um, log 2, 64, just there. I'm going to put that in my calculator and just to see what I get. Um, now, back when I was at school, we weren't able to do lots of different logs. We could only do a log base 10 and log base E, which I'll tell you about log base E in year 12. Um, but I, we could only do log base 10. And, you know, going back a step further than that, your parents would have used log books to work out what log base 10 was and log base E was. But uh, now we've got technology, we can make it log to the base anything if we wanted to. But I'm going to say log to the base 2 of 64. And I'm just going to push enter and it gives us the answer of 6, which is exactly what we had over here. I seem to have made a mistake. That's not x equals 2, that's x equals 6. Most of you have probably already seen that already, but uh, I corrected it. Okay, so just back to here. So that's exactly what we get, log base 2 of 64 equals 6. Okay, so we can use that log button over here to work out all the logs. Okay, so I might just um, take a screen capture of that, and um, I'll, I'll put that down in this document. I'll do that a little bit later um, after the video so that... Um, yeah, so you don't waste time now. The other thing I want to show you is um, solving. Um, the solving button works for all of these things. So I'm going to go back to here and remember how, to, how we solve things. I'll just make a new calculator page. Um, solving menu 3, 1. I'm going to solve one of these log equations up here. I'm going to do this one, log x 125 equals 3. And hopefully this is going to work. So I'm going to solve log, and what was it, x 125 equals, oh, sorry, close the bracket, equals 3. I probably don't need all of those brackets in there. There we go. Now again, I need to tell it what to solve it for. I'm going to solve it for x, and I got the answer of 5, which is what we had over there before. So you can solve anything now. You can solve log equations, you can solve indice equations, you can solve all sorts of things. Let's just solve an indice equation. Um, where are we? Let's go here, this one here, we tried this one before. Um, solve um, 3 to the power of, over here, 3 to the, oh no, not that one, 3 to the power of 2x, I put 2 times x, it's always good to just put a multiplication in between, equals, where are we, 1 over 27, comma x, hopefully I get the answer of negative 3 over 2, which is exactly what I've got. So now um, you can use your calculator to check your answers, I probably, I, I want you to do it by hand, but you can always use your calculator to check the answers um, afterwards because I don't believe you'll be able to use a calculator in this test. So, But it is it's very useful to, to get to use your calculator in year 10 because you will use it for year 11 and year 12. That's about all for this one. Um, I'll put up these uh, notes and video uh, very shortly. Thanks for listening.